your psoas and diaphragm are a match made in fascia. Literally, there is a connection between the two of them called the medial arcuate ligament. This is why when we have hip dysfunction, especially we have chronic psoas tension, it can make it really difficult to get deep diaphragmatic breaths. Additionally, if your breathing is challenged, it can also have repercussions in hip function. So let me show you what that connection is, this medial arcuate ligament. So here's your diaphragm. We have it demonstrated in two deflated gorgeous balls up inside the rib cage. And on the front side of the lumbar spine, feeding all the way to the lesser trochanter of the femur is the psoas. Now as the diaphragm wraps around and connects itself to the lumbar spine, which it also connects to, um, it passes over the psoas and this passage across the psoas is called the medial arcuate ligament. So this connection needs to be slidey and glidey and happy and mobile. And that is the literal linchpin between the two. Let's do just a, a little self exploration to um, tease out some stretch in that location. So come down onto the ground. And if you haven't learned an exercise called the diaphragm vacuum, you can look back through the YouTube channel and find some videos that describe exactly this initial part of the exercise. You lay down on the ground and hopefully you're on a, a mat something you can reach your arms so that you can locate the corners of a mat. And if that doesn't feel good for your shoulders, you can also just hold on to the sides of the mat. That'll come in to play in just a moment. I'm exposing my abdomen so that you can see. I'm gonna take an abdominal thoracic breath, exhaling all the air. And at the end of exhale, try to open the ribs as if I had taken a big rib cage breath without getting any air in. And when you do that, you'll still see a deep hollow in my gut. That is the stretch of the respiratory diaphragm moving towards its rib attachments and it's tractioning everything that's below. Let's do that one more time, just as a preparatory practice. Inhale abdomen, inhale ribs, exhale it all. At the end of exhale, keep your belly soft, but balloon your ribs. And release. So that's the, our initial starter point of this. Now, bring your hands up over your head. Now we're going to go looking for that arcuate ligament, as promised. So your hands come up overhead, and they're holding on to the yoga mat. And ideally, you can push the yoga mat away from you so that you can get a little bit more stretch between your rib cage and your pelvis. And now again, go into the diaphragm vacuum. Exhale everything, stretch your ribs apart. And now we wanna stretch the psoas. And to do that, you keep your diaphragm stretched in the vacuum and slowly reach your left or right leg away from you to elongate the psoas and traction that junction. Then release, rebreathe. Re-exhale, and I'll try not to talk this time. After the exhale, you open the ribs and then straighten the legs slowly. And release. Try that again. So you inhale, exhale completely, be as heavy as possible, stretch the ribs apart, feel that deep suction, and in slow motion, lengthen the leg away from you while stretching the arms even further overhead. Really you're trying to traction your whole body, but potentially feeling this sort of little linchpin between the psoas and the diaphragm, that arcuate ligament. And release, last time, breath in, exhale. stretching your leg away while maintaining the vacuum. And release it all. 
Now, the feelings inside your gut may have been a little bit vague, or you might have felt some really novel stretch. You can also do this propped up on a gorgeous ball or on a block underneath your sacrum, and that will even exaggerate that stretch just a little bit more. So remember, respiration and hip function are breath friends forever. They're not disconnected. They are literally sewn together by their match made in fascia. So take the time now and again to do some little investigation to this connection so that all systems are thriving.